Hey guys. I hate that intro. Hey guys. Been thinking of a good, better intro than that. See, to my friends, when I talk to them on the phone, I'll be like, what up? Maybe I'll do that from now on with you guys, since you're my friends too. Like, what up? Sorry. Anyway, working on a 2001 Lexus something. There's no badges on the back of the car. Um, ES300 is my guess. I don't know, we'll find out soon maybe when I put the scan tool data in here. Maybe it'll tell me. Symptoms on the car. I was told by my friend Pete that it was brought in for a check engine light and lean exhaust trouble codes. Now there's a catch to this. The battery goes dead every couple of days. And when I got here, the battery was dead. So we're not gonna have any code memory. My hands are tied there a little bit. I started it up, letting the alternator charge the system. And then uh, hopefully we'll set a full code, look at some fuel trims. Chasing a drain problem on the battery is difficult with a dead battery too. So I don't know, we'll see how this goes. Scan data next. Okay, so after I entered the VIN number, the eighth VIN uh, told me it was a GS300. So we'll read codes, I doubt there'll be any here. It'd be cool if there were. Yeah, that's what I thought. Dead battery. No history codes, of course no current codes. I have no check engine light on right now. All I have to go by is what Pete told me, which is there was lean exhaust trouble codes. Data display is next. I'm hoping my fuel trim numbers are out of whack at idle, or at least they're out of whack that I can recreate them sitting here. I see negative fuel trim numbers. He told me lean conditions. Now, I'm gonna have to ask him again if it's possible that they were rich conditions. Um, my trim, I'm looking right here, guys, at the short term is negative 10, and uh, trim bank one sensor one percentage. So the same number here looks like a redundant piece of data. I'm not sure why some manufacturers do that. Long term looks like it's imbalanced. Short term's negative 10. Both banks are short term two. So look at that guy. And no, uh, we don't want to do that. Too much glare. My short term two, short term one. Get those next to each other now. Negative 12, negative 10. Let's move the long term up there too. Focus up top here, guys, with me. My short terms negative on both banks long terms are at zero i'm going to hold my rpm up see what it does uh, by the way long terms would be at zero with the memory being wiped out from the dead battery so that doesn't help either so our focus is definitely going to be on short term here scan data baud rate here is super slow it is super slow. Okay, I, I can't I can't rely on this. I, I need to custom data display this. There's my O2s and there's me in the shot. Sorry. I am doing field work and it is what it is. Okay, uh, lo looks like long term is learning now here. We're minus 10 on bank one and uh, minus 13 on bank two. So short term has stabilized. And uh, let me raise the RPM. Let's watch these numbers. It's 2,500 RPM. And I have positive numbers under higher RPMs. So that would match our our lean concern. Let me go a little bit higher. I'm gonna to try to get this at three grand. 3,000 RPM. So it's getting worse as I'm raising the RPM. About 14% on the long term. Short term still high too. So these numbers are going to climb. Looking at bank one, focus on bank one. Look at 5% short term bouncing. 
14.1, 14.8 I saw a second ago. Kind of looking at total trim here because this battery was dead. Now there's a minus. So we'll call it about 14, 15% at 3,000. And negative 14 percent on bank two right there for a second negative nine negative ten negative trim numbers at idle positive trim numbers at higher rpms guys this is a classic dirty mass airflow sensor symptom right here i haven't test driven the car or anything like that um, i definitely am going to start by pulling this mass airflow sensor and taking a look at it Next step, I'm going under the hood. We'll worry about the battery draw after we troubleshoot this air fuel ratio problem here. All right, so we're, we're staying low tech here. Uh, no reason to uh, do any back probe testing, scope testing on this MAF. I'm just going to uh, unbolt it, take a look at it. I have the key off right now. Unplugging it is not a problem. Again, I'm, I'm going here, I'm starting here because of what I saw with trim numbers. I gotta get a bigger Phillips. By the way, looked at the mileage. It was about 144,000 on the cluster. Yeah, that is super dirty. That's cool. Nice easy one here, fellas. Uh, I'll post some other links for identifying dirty mass airflow sensors. I'm um, thinking of one as a Subaru, another one's a, a Lexus like this, another one is a Toyota, um, showing all kinds of different ways to identify dirty mass airflows. Sometimes it's just fuel trim, and then if it's easy like this one, look, it's right there. Why would we get crazy with it? Just unbolt it, take a look at it. Let me get my flashlight. See how dark black these resistors are? Try to get you an after shot of the same thing. Now, how am I gonna clean that? I'm going to use this. <laughs> no, not the pocket screwdriver. Yes, the pocket screwdriver. I like it because I can't tell with a brush on this design how hard I'm pushing on the resistors and um, I found it the most effective way to lightly lightly scrape the crust off of these resistors and uh, I've had lots of success with it it is dangerous if you're not careful you can easily bend these so I'm not recommending that uh, nah yes I am just be careful when you're doing it Okay, I'm gonna put this flashlight in my mouth and I can't talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> Can I show you at the same time? Probably not. One final piece. I know you guys will like this one. That's right. Brake clean. Make sure it's nice and dry.
I'll get you an after shot of these resistors. And there, there is your after shot. You guys want to use the special mass airflow cleaner? By all means, do it. I've been doing this long enough to be comfortable with brake clean. Not all mass airflows are cleanable for you guys that are maybe watching me for the first time. Let's put this back in, see what the scan data looks like. <clears throat> Biggest thing with these mass airflows is make sure they're, that they're not wet at all when you're putting them back in. And make sure, of course, that you always unplug the electrical connector when you're cleaning them. That's just a safety net to ensure in case we forgot to turn the key off when we're doing our stuff. Mass airflow sensors will heat the resistor hundreds of, of degrees above the outside air temperature and you spray that cold cleaner on there. Uh, not a good thing for the sensor. Let's go back inside now. All right, starting it up. Oh, that's cool, it kind of held the data there. So we'll watch these long-term numbers. Let's watch the short-term and long-term. We're in open loop right now. Flat line lean on the O2s at the moment, which is what I expected to see if we in fact fix this we'll be able to tell once this goes into closed loop the short terms will start to correct i know this glare is bad guys i'm sorry i like actually seeing this lean o2 at the moment i'm not going to give it any gas i'm going to let it warm up on its own for a second might be another good learning moment about open and closed loop recognition right now we are still in open loop. Sometimes you can force the system to start working. It's kind of looking for the O2s to switch. It's one of the enabling criteria for closed loop fuel control on some systems so just a quick snap throttle can kind of get that going when you snap the throttle you're there you go you're driving the o2 rich and lean and there we go positive trim numbers countering are negative learned memory This is a fix. Some of you might be thinking why it didn't set rich exhaust codes, the P0172 and P0175. Well, it wasn't bad enough on the idle trim numbers, the negative numbers weren't bad enough to set that code. So I'm sure that if we had the memory and we looked at our freeze frame data, that this would have been an under load lean condition to 3000 RPM, probably had positive 20 plus percent on our trims. It even sounds better. That's cool. Pocket screwdriver and some brake clean. <laughs> I'm laughing because I've gotten so much crap about using those tools, but hey man, take a look. Did I fix it? I did. Raising the RPM, let's look at our higher RPM numbers. Hold it at 2,500 for a little bit. I like the negative trim numbers I'm seeing, countering the long-term memory. Try to hold this at 25 first. And yes, even the short amount of time that I let you guys see this before was enough for it to start learning. So we gotta let this normalize. So 
I'm at 7% and 4% at 2,500. Still seeing some negative trims on the short term. So I think that seven is going to come down a little bit more. And let's go to 3,000. Two percent on bank two. Bank two looks great. Bank one is a little bit leaner, but nothing crazy. There's five percent and negative one point six on the short term. That's going to come down even more. These numbers look great. Let's come back to twenty-five. We got some memory still in here at this one at 8.6% at this RPM and the negative four, that's going to come down too. Cooling fan just turned on, so that's going to potentially be a different cell as well, different load. Positive eight, negative three, total trim will be five when this balances out. Let's go back to idle. That is a fix, guys. Now there's a lot of other ways I could have identified this. We could have gone for a test drive, did some O2 sensor wide open throttle tests. We could have connected a scope to it, checked peak signals. All of that is valid. All of that is stuff that I teach. But here's the one that is really, really nice to use in this scenario. Just a, a wrap up with this is when you see negative fuel trim numbers at idle and positive fuel trim numbers at higher RPMs, that points at the mass airflow sensor. Start there for sure. So nice, easy one as far as the trim goes. And there's some other stuff with this car. I don't know if it will be included in this video. It may be a separate one or I may not do it at all. Is our charging system and our battery on this. Uh, the complaint of this thing going dead. If I was in the field and I'm doing this, the battery drain and the battery draw is a completely separate problem. I would absolutely be, be charging for that separately. Now I say in the field, I am in the field. I'm, I'm doing a job for my friend Pete. Um, but I've only been in on this really 20 minutes and most of that was just making sure you guys were included in the shots and in the process. Uh, I'll look at the charging system for him with my regular flat feet. Uh, but I'm telling you guys, if you're in the field, uh, knowledge is money, knowledge is power and you shouldn't be giving this stuff away. Separate problem, you address the lean condition, check engine light, we know the light's not coming back on. And now we have a separate problem of a battery going dead. It's a separate issue. Uh, then there's this oil light that's on too that I don't like. I'm not even looking at that, to be honest with you. Um, the engine sounds fine. I'll check the oil level. And then outside of that, I'm not doing an oil pressure test. It's not my concern. I'll, I'll make uh, Pete aware of that and I'll, I'll let him handle that part. Um, but charging system. Again, I don't know if I'll include that in here. Depends what I see. If it just ends up being a, a bad battery uh, that's not holding a charge, I'm not making a video of that. Um, I gotta get going too. I got a lot of stuff I gotta do tonight. So, I uh, hope you guys like that for the Dirty Mass Airflow. Real nice, easy one to identify. And it was cool that you guys got to see the, the whole process. Sitting here right now, um, my long term is negative 0.8 on bank one, negative 2% on bank two. Short terms look great. Um, that is a fix. Nice, easy one, money in our pockets. So thanks again for watching what I'm doing and, and I appreciate all the support I've been getting.